hi there and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we once again go back into the Word, spend time in the Word. And this should be, I thought it was last week, but I believe this will be the conclusion of our look at the well-dressed Christian, focused for the last nine weeks on the whole armor of God. Uh, so that's where we're going to pick up where we left off last week. But before we do that, I just want to ask, Mark, if you'll just ask God's blessing on our time together in his word. Well, Lord, we thank you for your word, yes, for all the wisdom and understanding that we can get out of it, and for you to show us which way to go in love. Just open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to what you have for us today. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. As I said, this is um, we we've been. This is the ninth week that we have looked at the well-dressed Christian. Dressed to the nines. Dressed to the nines. <laughs> so dressed. Really, that's that's right on there. Yes. yes. Um, the the thing is, it starts with putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, there is nothing more important than that. But we've been, as I said, we've been focused on the whole armor of God out of Ephesians chapter six. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at that verse, talking about the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Mm-hmm. All right. So when we ended last week, surprisingly quickly, mm-hmm. that's what we were looking at. And I was talking about the fact that Satan, our adversary, the devil, he wants to, his purpose is to bring division, to divide us. Mm-hmm. Not only to divide us from our, our Lord, but to divide us from each other, because that accomplishes the same purpose. And one of the things that it causes him to want to bring division so much between the brethren, which includes the cisterns, mm-hmm. is, and I, we, I think we ended with this first last week, talking about from Ecclesiastes, where Solomon said, two are better than one for their labor, because they have good return for their labor. Two are better than one because they have good return for the labor. For if either of them falls... The one will lift up his companion, but woe to the one who is alone when he falls, for there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two shall withstand him, and a cord of three strands is not easily torn apart. That's the point. There is power in our unity that the devil fears. Because yes. it gives us the, that's what it's about, right? Right. All right. It is, he's trying to overpower us. The battle, this battle, this warfare that we face is about Satan trying to overpower us. Mm-hmm. But as we talked about in the past, while the enemy keeps diligently working at stealing, killing, and destroying, the prophet Isaiah said, devise a plan, but it will be thwarted. State a proposal, but it will not stand, for God is with us. Isaiah 8.10. So Paul, the Apostle Paul, when he was talking about the tribulations, the distresses, the persecutions, and more in Romans chapter 8, he talked about how we can be moved by the Holy Spirit. He was moved by the Holy Spirit to say this. But in all these things, all of those distresses, all of those persecutions, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8.37. We're more than conquerors. Well, as they say in the infomercials, mm-hmm. but wait. <laughs> but wait. Stop. Hold on. I said repeatedly as we studied about the word, the sword, that your faith has to be filled with power and be effective. And it will be if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and act upon it. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. It's totally scriptural. If, 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 the love of God is unconditional. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. The promises of God are not. Okay? Okay? Think about this. I just read from Romans chapter 8. I want to just read some other verses from Romans 8. I want you to think about this. 
However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Romans 8, 9. Mm-hmm. And then in Romans 8, 10, the next verse, it says, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. And then in the next verse, verse 11, it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And you know, in Romans 8, 13, I could be, there's a, a thousand verses I could read, but I, Romans 8, 13, it says, for if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live, Romans 8, 13. In verses 16 and 17 in that eighth chapter, it says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Think about Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. If you love God, Mm -hmm. if you are called according to his purpose, well, then that's true in your life. And last, I just read Romans 8.31. He says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? That word if appears about 1,600 times in the Bible. And it is implied hundreds and hundreds of times more. Just in Romans chapter 8, you can study the word if. You can. But, I mean, it's an important concept that we often overlook. You see, this this opens the door. I don't even know where I want to go here, but I will. (laughs) This opens the door to one of the greatest theological conflicts in the the church, one that has divided the church for centuries, Mm -hmm. and that is Calvinism Mm -hmm. versus Armenianism, all right? which is all about the place of, or even the existence of, free will. John Calvin didn't believe in free will. He, he believed that, you know, the will of God was at effect in your life, regardless of what you chose. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the other hand, Armenianism says that, you know, you have, you have free will and you have to make the choice. Mm-hmm. Now, please don't get upset with me. Don't write to me about your views on this. And certainly I ask that you don't hate me or bomb me or anything else because of your views on this. Please, if you disagree with what I say, which is not unlikely, take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Because you just need to be in agreement with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And we all see us through a mirror dimly, dimly right now, okay? Mm-hmm. Everything you do, you should do to seek his will in your life. Now, when it comes to Calvinism and Arminianism, I believe that the truth lies in the fact that God's ways are still not our ways. And that he and he alone is sovereign. Maybe the answer is both. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or either. (laughs) <laughs> well, well, God lives outside of time. Well, it's just, but it's like our understanding is still clouded about a lot of things. So, listen, this could not have become such a conflict between John Calvin and Jacobus Arminius if they hadn't both been able to make good arguments for their case. Right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not like it's clear cut. And if these guys, it wasn't clear cut to them. I'm not upset if it's not totally clear cut to me. I will trust in the Lord, all right? Now, having said that, I personally believe that on the day that I accepted Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. first as Lord and then as Savior, okay? That meeting was totally and completely preordained. And in his plan. I believe that with all of my heart. Okay. Jesus showed me that day how he had been involved in my life from the time I was yet in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. 
and doctors wanted to abort me because they said it would probably kill my mother to deliver me. Well, obviously I wasn't aborted and my mother lived, okay? He showed me how he had protected and delivered me throughout my unsaved life. Mm -hmm. And now, in this discussion that I had with the Lord for the first time in my life, when I encountered the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, I heard him say to me the most important thing that I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. He said to me, you've had your life, yes. now it's mine. Did I not have free will? I will tell you at that point, I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's all I can tell you. I mean, it had become my heart's desire to be totally surrendered to the Lord. So nothing was ever the same after that. I want to tell you something. And I know that by grace, you'll have a little grace with me. Okay. I'm a sinner. I have sinned since I got saved. I have sinned. I'm not going to recount all my sins to you here. <laughs> Although I know the word says, you know, confess your sins one to another. There is, a, there is a time and place for that, okay? But I don't have any need to recall my sins. Because David wrote in the Psalms, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Psalm 103, verse 12. And he'll no longer call them to mind, it says in Isaiah 43, right? Mm -hmm. The only one who would dare to call, call my sins to mind is the accuser of the brethren. And he'll pay for that, I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. okay? I don't believe that I ever sinned by accident. Uh, listen to what I'm telling you. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I don't believe, like, there was an old comedian, you probably don't know, Flip Wilson. Yeah, the devil made me do it. And he used to have a skit that he did, the devil made me do it. Well, the simple fact of the matter is the devil never made me do anything. He doesn't have the power to make me do anything. He will certainly try and entice me to do things. Talk He'll try and seduce me into doing things. That's the wiles of the enemy mm -hmm. that the whole armor is there to protect us from, right? Mm -hmm. So that leaves me, he has no power to force me to sin. So that leads me to this obvious conclusion. I chose to sin. Yes. So if that's where my free will takes me, uh -huh. Lord, remove it from my life. Mm. Okay? My desire is to follow the example of the Lord and say to the Father, not my will, but thy will be done. I want to be able to sing that glorious hymn, I Surrender All. And have it be truly the fruit of what God has put in my heart. Okay? So if you get into great debates about free will and not free will, temper that mm. with the love of God. And temper it with the fact that you don't know everything. You know? We don't. Not yet. We will. Paul said, for if I preach the gospel, this is Paul, okay? Mm. If I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for I am under compulsion. The King James says, necessity is laid upon me, right? For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward. But if against my will, I will have a stewardship entrusted to me. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 16 and 17. There was a man who had surrendered his will. The mechanics of this don't matter. Right. You know? That's why getting into these debates, are they really profitable? Mm -hmm. What you need to know is regardless of what you think about free will, if, you, if, you're, if you're positive that you have free will, surrender it. Right. Right. If you are positive that you don't have free will, rejoice, because your father who has your will then is a loving God. Amen. <laughs> I want to give you a real simplistic example, a really simplistic example. Of, of the danger of free will and the fact that you have a choice, okay? Mm -hmm. If a brother called me and said, for example, I just heard God told me that there is a man down at Burger King, a rich, rich billionaire 
who is a philanthropist, and he's down at Burger King, and he's handing out $100 bills to everybody that walks through the door. So this brother says, you need to get down there quick. So I hop in my car, turn the key up, push the button now, <clears throat> and speed right off and go to McDonald's. Well, I like McDonald's better than Burger King. Missed out. When I get into McDonald's, am I going to get the $100 bills? Why? Because I have allowed my desire to lead me someplace where that man is not at work. All right? That's what free will can do for you. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago, back in the 70s, in the late 70s, up in New York, I, I preached a number of times, but I preached at this one small black Pentecostal church. I loved these brothers and sisters there. And they sang a song one, one time. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't re really remember the song, but I, I, remember, I remember what it was about. I, because that was the first time I ever heard it, and I've never heard it since. Mm. But I remember the name of the song. I want to be under the spout where the blessings come out. <laughs> I want to be under the spout where the blessings come out. Did you do his word, or was it yours? Mm. You know, did he speak it to you, or did he speak it to somebody else? Or did you speak it to yourself? Okay. There are a lot of ifs here, okay? The, f the fact is, if you don't obey, it's not that he's punishing you and not giving you what he promised. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not there. If you're not obedient, if you didn't go to Burger King where he was giving it away, well, then you have no right to expect it. You know, and it says in the last days, Paul wrote to Timothy in chapter 4 of the third letter, the third the second letter to Timothy, he said, in the last days, men will not endure sound doctrine. They're going to choose people who will preach according to their own desires and tickle their ears. Mm -hmm. If you do the things that you want, you're going to miss the blessings of God. It is that simple. And it's not because he's punishing you. It's because you have chosen not to be where the blessings are. It's that simple. And he is searching your heart. Always. Always. God searches your heart. And when, you know what he's searching for? Faith. And you know what faith is? It is responding to what he has spoken to you. Right. Amen. Okay. A lot of times, I mean, we, don't, we just simply don't understand this, it seems. Um, you, I, there's so much going on in the church today that, that troubles me. Like I said in the beginning, God's love is unconditional. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, John 3, 16. His promises are not. In Deuteronomy 28, now let me tell you something. I'm not going to get into the discussion. The other great debate is about, you know, the, the place of the, the law and the prophets in the church today. Well, go read what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, not, none of it's going to pass away. It's there. It's right. It's the word of God. It is God-breathed, and it is profitable for you, okay? He said, now it shall be if, there's that word, mm -hmm. if you diligently obey the, the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you, and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. Now, you don't earn his blessings, okay? You don't earn his blessings by being where he told you to be. You're just under the spout where the blessings come out. Mm -hmm. And if you're not there, the blessings are still going to come out. You're just not going to be there to get them. And your focus wouldn't be on the blessings. Your no. focus would be on just pleasing and delighting God. When you are walking in truth, you will come to know that. It says in Psalm, what is it, Psalm 37, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I promise you this, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will be the desire of your heart. And, it, and there's a number of verses that confirm that. I was just thinking, sometimes the blessing that he has in store for you is not one that you would actually pick. Because Stephen was in the right place, and the blessings were coming out on him. 
and you preached a sermon where if you're a vase, there's three ways for you to be filled. An earthen vessel, yes. And one of the ways is for it to be smashed. That's the best way. And the most dramatic. That's the way Stephen right. went, or God chose to use Stephen that way. It might have been not what he would, what Stephen would have chosen going in, but it all worked out okay. But the, but the point is that Stephen <clears throat> would have been willing. I mean, even if he yeah. was a willing servant. Right. Yeah. I mean, don't think that he was facing those Jews who were so bitter and hateful against him mm -hmm. as he was giving the most powerful sermon, powerful. the most complete sermon mm -hmm. of the scriptures in all the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Because what he is saying is yeah. it is confronting them to their face about their failure right. Right. in their relationship with the Lord. Don't think he didn't know that there would be consequences for that, yes, but he was willing. Yes. He wasn't afraid of the Pharisees. He, was he wasn't afraid the truth in love. Right, because he wasn't afraid of the consequences. Was he blessed by that? He looked up and he so looked into the face, old. the glory of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. You don't earn his blessings. You're just under the spout. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to be. Now, does all this make his word his word conditional? Absolutely. Yes and no. <laughs> okay. Um, I've heard somebody say, I've heard a couple of people actually say, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I don't care if you believe it or not. I don't care. Whether you believe it or not has nothing to do with God's word being settled. It says forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Psalm 1989, verse 89. God's word is settled. You can't change, you can't change his word. Once he but spoke it, it's done. <laughs> what you can do is change the effect. You can influence or affect the, the effect that it has on your life. If you're obedient to his word, you're going to be walking in the blessings. That's right. If you are not obedient to his word, you're, be you're not going to be in the blessings. You're going to be in a different place and you don't want to be there. No. Now, this, but you have to have an understanding of this, okay? Everything in the Word. Now remember, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, All Scripture, mm -hmm. all Scripture is God free and profitable, okay? For teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Everything in the Word was written for you. For you, okay? It says in Romans 15, 4, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. But not everything in the word was written to you. And if you don't understand that, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. I promise you, you'll get yourself in trouble. Not everything in the word was written to you. There are a lot of things in the word of God I pray that I never hear. I can read them and grow in understanding and instruction but I don't want to hear him say those words to me. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. There's a lot of examples, but I just think this is a good one and it makes it pretty clear. Simon Peter, a bond servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is how he starts his second letter, 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. If he says, I'm writing to those who have the same kind of faith as me, well, let me tell you something, and I hope you can see this. If you don't have the same kind of faith as Peter, you can take that letter out of the Bible because it's not written to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. A Peter kind of faith. you got to have a Peter kind of faith. That's right. There's a lot of things in Scripture like that. Now, think about it. Pray about it. I mean... But, but don't, don't just reject it because you, maybe you've never heard that before. He's writing to a people. The, the, most of the word that is spoken, written, is written to the people of God. Not written to the, to the unbelievers and the unsaved. Now, obviously, there are things that are. Mm -hmm. But most of what God spoke, he's speaking to his own people. If you're not his own people, his he's not saying it to you. It doesn't count, you know, get instruction from it, and maybe it'll drive you to want to be his people. Okay? It's a father's instruction to his children. 
I'm going to give you another example, and this is one that troubles me a lot because of the way I hear it. John, the Apostle John, in his third letter, he said, and I'm sure you've, if you've been a Christian any time, you've probably heard this, you know. He, John prayed for Gaius mm -hmm. and said, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. He said, you know, I pray that you be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. And so many prosperity preachers have said, okay, this is an indication. God wants you rich. God wants you to prosper. No, you know what? That's not, that's not true at all. Unless, of course, you have the same, the same attitude and spirit that Gaius had. He was known throughout the church for his support of the church, for his giving, for his support of the people who were out preaching the gospel. You see, that's why God, John, that's why God had John pray for him. If you're a tight one, you're not supporting, you know, if you're not, if you're not a, don't have a giving heart, maybe God's not going to pray, have anybody pray for you that you get more. Because if you're not faithful with, to, with what he has given you, why should he give you more? Okay. I have to bring this to a close. I said I would. The whole armor of God. Ephesians 6.18. It says, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. The whole armor of God is not about being a soldier, although we are soldiers. It is about being part of an army. That's the army of God. Okay. In, in Joshua, it says when Joshua was by Jericho, in Joshua 5.13, it says that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? He found out that that was the captain of the Lord, the host of the Lord. There is a host. We are part of each other. Okay? We're not, we don't, it's not about us individually. Okay? It's about us as an army. It's about, you've, I'm sure you've heard the analogy about how the Roman soldiers, when they took their shields, they would join together right. and build a wall with those shields right. that became almost impenetrable. Okay? Don't think you have to stand alone. Two are better than one for their labor. Jesus always sent them out by twos, right? Make sure that you have a relationship with other Christians. It may be even difficult to find in this day and age mm -hmm. because you need good fellowship. And good fellowship is having people around you who will tell you that you're doing right and encourage you or wrong and correct you. Okay. Let me just go back real quick. I'm going to go real quick mm -hmm. to the beginning of the study where we talked about the start of the whole armor of God. And it says, therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done all to stand. stand. So where are you going to stand? I'm going to stand under the spout where the blessings come out. Father, I thank you that you are a God of blessing. Lord, that you desire to bless us to give us all good things. You gave us your son, Christ Jesus. What other good thing would you withhold? Teach us, train us, Lord, to walk in obedience to your voice, that we might live in the fullness of what you have for us. We praise you and thank you, Father, for your word, the abundance of your word, which has changed our lives and continues to do so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Till next time. God bless you. I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a